Hi, this is Jeff Yu from the Division of General Internal Medicine at Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. In this video, we will discuss how to archive and obtain feedback on your ultrasound studies in the Department of Medicine at London Health Sciences Centre. This video is part of a tutorial series for internal medicine residents at Western University, but it can also be reviewed by fellows and consultants in the department, as I encourage all users and enthusiasts of ultrasound to be archiving and reporting their studies always. To quickly review the ultrasound systems available in the Department of Medicine, we first have the older Sonocyte S-Series machine at the Victoria Hospital campus, located in the D17 room. While this machine is older with less features, it's still quite capable of producing adequate images for procedures in point-of-care diagnostic ultrasound, and it's equipped with a linear and phase array transducer. At University Hospital, we have a newer Sonocyte Edge 2 system, located in the A4100 hallway. This comes with more features, as well as an additional curvilinear or abdominal probe. As an important note, our colleagues in the emergency department and intensive care units at both sites also have many ultrasound systems available, and all of them are wirelessly connected to the same archival system. So why do we need to archive our ultrasound studies? Well, firstly, it's our medical legal responsibility to be documenting images whenever we use ultrasound for procedural or diagnostic purposes. If the images are not archived, then there is no medical legal proof that ultrasound was actually used. Secondly, archiving studies and sending them for feedback is an integral component to training. As with learning anything new, there must be a feedback mechanism to allow for continued development and refinement of skill. Lastly, for internal medicine residents, archiving and obtaining feedback on ultrasound studies throughout their first three years of training is a requirement. Once a study is reported and overread by a consultant, then that study becomes a part of the trainee's ultrasound portfolio to ultimately demonstrate ultrasound competency. As a side note for anyone who is just starting to use ultrasound, it is a very steep learning curve, so don't be daunted by having your images becoming a part of the patient's medical record. All submitted studies are overread by a consultant, and there is a clear understanding that many archive studies are for training purposes only. So what images need to be archived? Well, it's completely patient and study dependent. As, of a, as a minimal recommendation, any thoracentesis, paracentesis, or central venous access should at least have a clip demonstrating a site for safe needle entry. For lung ultrasound, there should be clips of at least three or four zones on each hemithorax, which was discussed in the lung ultrasound tutorials. For the example of the IVC, it should be shown as draining into the right atrium with hepatic vein drainage shown if possible. Collapsibility can then be tested with inspiration or sniffing, and you can also choose to simply eyeball the size or collapsibility or actually save the images with caliper measurements. So with this in mind, we'll now talk about the general workflow when obtaining ultrasound studies. During the clinical encounter with the patient, we always start by logging into the machine. Then we archive appropriate video clips of the ultrasound in real time, which gets saved on the machine. These clips and images get automatically transferred through the wireless network to the online archival system called QPath. Ultimately, we want to log out of the machine, wipe it clean, and plug it back at where we found it. At the end of the day, or when there is free time, we will then report on the study and submit it. The first step requires logging into QPath from an internet browser. Next, we will fill out an interpretation report using pre-designed worksheets. Then the most important step is to submit the study for QA feedback. Any archive study is always saved on QPath, but if we don't submit it for QA feedback, then it's assumed it was just a practice study and it does not become a part of, of our portfolio. Usually one of the point of care ultrasound consultants such as myself will provide written feedback within 24 to 72 hours. This stays on QPath and also a copy is emailed to you. This study, after all of this, becomes a part of our portfolio leading towards demonstrating ultrasound competence. Let's get into some of the details. The first step is logging into the ultrasound machine by pressing some buttons. With the Edge 2 system, we simply press either the A or B program button. With the S series, we need to press the patient button located on the left side of the screen. This will then bring up the login screen. If the boxes are not blank, then the previous user had forgotten to log out, so we can help them 
by pressing the new slash n button at the bottom left. All the images are still saved on the machine in QPath, so there's no concern here about losing any images. On the screen, there are only two boxes we need to fill out. The first box is labeled as ID, which corresponds to the patient PIN. On QPath, the patient's name gets automatically populated based on the PIN. Next, we need to fill out the box labeled Referring Doctor. When you create an ultrasound study, remember that you are the doctor referring these images to be overread by someone else. Note, on the Edge 2 system, there's a physical keyboard we can use, but on the S-series, there is only an on-screen keyboard that must be navigated awkwardly with the trackpad. After the required information is filled in, press Done at the bottom right of the screen. Give the machine a few seconds to log in wirelessly, and it will return to the live image screen. We can confirm we have logged in by seeing the patient pin at the top of the screen. We're now ready to scan. Once an appropriate image is obtained, press the clip button and the machine will start recording for 6 seconds of whatever is showing on the screen. Note that the Edge 2 has a physical clip button, and the S-Series has a button located on the left side of the menu. Please also make an important distinction between clip and save. It's intuitively tempting to be pressing save when archiving images, but this will only save a still image. Make sure to use the video clip button for pretty much everything. Once all the necessary images are obtained, we must log out of the system. On the Edge 2, this is done by pressing either the A or B buttons again. On the S series, press Patient, and then New slash End at the bottom. When you're ready to go onto QPath at the hospital, try to avoid using the thin client computers. While they should still work with QPath, their hardware capabilities may not always be sufficient. Try to use computers with the full towers instead. If you are at home, QPath can be accessed via the remote Citrix receiver using LHSE desktop. First, open up an Internet Explorer window and type in POCUS in the address bar. On the login screen, use your PowerChart username as the login name. The default password is your PowerChart username in all caps. Please note this is not your PowerChart password. Alternatively, if your username is under 5 characters, you may need to add QP asterisk in front of the password. You can also use the Forgot Your Password option to reset the password through your LHSC email. Please also don't hesitate to email me with any account issues. Once logged in, please go to the top right of the screen to change your password. Now let's have a quick demonstration on QPath. This might be the screen you see when you first log in. Note that you are seeing all the studies available at LHSC, either in the emergency department, ICU, or medical wards. Let's zoom in a little bit. You'll notice various columns at the top. These columns are all filters that you can use in order to find your study. You'll notice that I've collapsed the patient pin and patient name columns, just for privacy purposes. But let's say you want to look for images done by yourself. You want to now go to the operator column, click on the button labeled All, and then press Myself. Give the machine a few moments, and you will see all your studies pop up. Let's open up this study that was, that was done for the purpose of assessing a pleural fusion. You want to open up a study by pressing the bolded date button. This is the worksheet view that you would typically see when you open up a study. You'll notice that on the top are the same columns that we were filtering out for, and this is your particular study. Um, and before we begin, always look at the exam type. You'll notice that this patient is labeled with ER abdomen, even though I was scanning him for a pleural fusion. This is because I was using the abdominal preset, and QPath by default chooses ER abdomen for these presets. You want to click on the exam type, and then choose something appropriate, such as internal medicine thoracic. Again, give QPath a few seconds, and it will refresh the right side of the panel, which is the worksheet that you will be using to submit your interpretation report. On the left side of the panel are your ultrasound images. You can scroll through them and also use various controls to change some of the settings, such as the brightness and the contrast, or perhaps even adding a text label. You'll notice for this patient, there is a complicated looking loculated pleural fusion. And therefore, in my report, my initial clinical question was for pleural fusion. 
But I also recommend that instead of just free texting, you can click on the button here to choose pre-selected options. So the question for this patient was evaluation for chest drainage. You can type in the rest, such as clinical background, and you can go through all the findings through lung ultrasound. Again, you can free text, but I highly recommend you to click on button and use these options as they are able to systematically guide you through the interpretation. At the very end, you want to type a conclusion. So for example, complicated, loculated, pleural effusion. I was not comfortable in draining this, and therefore, I want to provide a recommendation of consulting respirology for chest tube. At the very end, you want to then go to the very top of the screen and press Submit for QA. I'm going to then click Email Notification. Choose my name at the very bottom. And click on Attach Report. Now you're done. Expect to receive a feedback report in 24 to 72 hours. Thank you. As always, feel free to email me, page me, or call me on my office phone whenever you have any questions about ultrasound or want to go through a scan together.